So two things that are scary. One is that the concept of financial independence is pretty deeply rooted in kind of past historical performance of the you know, US stock market or the global stock market. And it's entirely possible that the assumptions we've built over the last hundred years just don't work in the future. So one scary thing is let's build this life, let's quit our jobs, let's you know, live off the 4% rule and you know, all of a sudden that 4% rule doesn't work and now you're at a point where your retirement savings doesn't last. Uh, no one knows what the stock market holds, there's no way to be 100% certain. So one scary thing is it's entirely baked off assumptions that are just that, they're just assumptions, they're not certainty. Uh, so that's a little scary, knowing that you're basing your life off data that may or may not be correct. Um, I think the other thing is most people that don't have much exposure to financial independence, you know, hear, oh, you're retired, you must be rich. Uh, and so, you know, this weird thing where it's like, well, no, like, just because I don't have to work doesn't mean I have so much money that I want to go spend it. We, we've been invited to go places where, you know, hotels are $1,000 a night and, you know, people are like, well, you know, I heard you mention on a podcast that, you know, you guys are financially independent. Like, why would you not go? And we're like, no, 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 we're financially independent because we don't stay at hotels that cost $1,000 a night. And there's this, you know, weird societal pressure of, oh, financial independence equals retired, retired equals rich, rich equals you can spend money and do all these things. And that's kind of the opposite, right? Like we don't do those things so that we can do this. If we wanna spend $1,000 a night at a hotel, right? We need to not be, we're, we wouldn't be financially independent. Like the world we've created for ourselves or the life we've created for ourselves doesn't allow for that uh, right now. I think I've said a few times, like the funny thing about financial independence, and I found this myself in quitting my job to start a company is that people are often more creative when they're not you know, stressed out about what they're doing. So when you hit this financial independence, I don't see a lot of people who don't actually end up making money in their early retirement. Uh, and so if you can kind of realize that, wow, by unburdening myself with a job I don't love or a stressful career, uh, I might actually have the creativity to do something that I love that ends up making money and I actually might be happier and better off um, and you know, maybe I'm actually able to live a life beyond what I thought I'd saved for, you know, if you could actually internalize that, maybe you could say it's a great idea um, because it actually puts you in a position where you're free to do the things you love, which most people end up finding a way to earn income off of. Uh, so it's kind of scary because it's super unknown and when you quit your job, you don't know what that thing is and you don't know if you'll make money. So without the financial independence beforehand, you know, it would be really stressful, I think. If the average person could somehow flip a switch in their head that says I am financially independent, even though they weren't, uh, that would lead them to a fulfilling career doing something exciting that made them money. And then, you know, they could later realize they didn't actually have it, but that was okay. I don't think that works, but it would be an interesting kind of experiment.